How's it going guys? It's your boy Mike from Seattle and today I want to talk about why I invest in Gary, Indiana, which has been dubbed the most miserable city in America. So I'm going to go ahead and be honest with you about why I'm investing here and how terrible the situation in Gary really is. But for those of you who stick around to the end of the video, real quick, I want to talk about something special that I'm going to do for my viewers, all right? So stick around to the end of the video and if you're interested, please let me know down in the comments. Let's get right into why Gary, Indiana is dubbed the most miserable city in the country and why I'm still investing there. I'm gonna give you a brief overview on Gary, Indiana. Gary was founded in 1906 by the U.S. Steel Corporation. By the 1950s, Gary was a bustling city that over 200,000 people called home. However, its reliance on one particular industry was ultimately its downfall. When foreign steel became cheap, it no longer made sense to produce it in Gary. At the height of its prosperity in the 1970s, the steel factory employed over 30,000 people. But only 20 years later, that number decreased to just 6,000, and all the way down to only 5,100 by 2015. Everyone who could leave did, and that left you with the people who couldn't, largely the poor and uneducated. Today, it's one of the major urban blight towns of the Rust Belt. The job sector has never recovered and any attempts to revitalize the area have failed. There's only 69,000 people left in Gary. That's almost a 75% reduction from the original largest population that it recorded. Nearly one third of all houses in Gary are unoccupied or abandoned. The median household income is 31,900 and the median median value of a home in Gary is $66,100. The poverty rate is three times the national average. By every metric, Gary, Indiana is a failed city. So why in the heck does your boy, the duly elected sheriff of the internet, invest in such a terrible, horrible place? It's very simple. There is a lot of opportunity in Gary. As you saw right there, nearly a third of all houses are unoccupied or abandoned. The value of homes is through the floor. So it's easier for me, for you, for a beginner who doesn't have a lot of money to get started investing. Now, for those of you who follow my channel, you know that my mentor Mark started investing in Gary, Indiana from out of state when he lived in Virginia. And I watched him grow from his first property to nine to 10 to 20 to where I think he is now about 20 different rentals in Gary. And I was highly skeptical. A quick Google search will show that it's got extremely high crime rates, poverty rates, as I just described, and then it's ultimately a very depressing pressed city. So why are we both investing there and how are we managing to have such good success? Well, ultimately, I'm a positive person. I like to think that I'm an optimistic person. Um, I'm not willing to just count somebody out or count an area out. I think that everywhere you go, pretty much in every market, you can find deals and you can make something work for yourself. So even though there's multiple different neighborhoods of Gary that are just terrible, three of the city's high schools, uh, out of the three, two of them have already been shut down. They're boarded up when I took a tour there I just looked at this giant high school that's just been shuttered for God knows how long it's a depressing city to drive through it really is however I'm still ultimately positive on Gary I know a lot of investors are moving into the area a ton are moving into Indiana in general Indianapolis and Northwest Indiana both get huge searches on Google and on other search engines when it comes to people looking for markets to invest in. And again, the main reason why is because it's affordable. If you live in Seattle, you live in California, New York, Chicago, Florida, you're used to four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar home values. How does a little guy, how does the blue collar American like you, like me, ever get started investing in real estate, it's going to take you five years to save the down payment for one of those houses. I mean, hundred to $200,000 to buy one of these properties, it's pretty hard to save. However, in Gary, my average down payment is like 15,000 bucks for a property. Now, the nice thing about Gary, one of the best things about it is that even though the property values are so low, I bought a house for 34,000, 52,000, 60,000, 70,000, and a duplex for 90,000. Those are my five properties. My rents blow the 1% rule out of the water. Now I'm on record as saying that the 1% rule is hot garbage. I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it's a really good rule. It's outdated. Maybe it worked in some market somewhere at some point, 
Personally, I'm not a fan. However, if you do use the 1% rule, I'm getting 1.5%, sometimes 2% of what the value of the house is in rent. And the quick summary, the 1% rule says if you buy a house for $100,000, it should rent for $1,000 a month. 1% of the value of the house is what it should rent for. So a $500,000 house in Seattle should rent for $5,000 a month and they don't rent for that much. So that's where I think the rule is garbage. Um, but that's on another, that, that's, that's tangential. It's off some, some other topic. Anyways, Gary, Indiana. All right, let's bring it back. Even though the city is depressed, it can only fall so far, right? I mean, it's too close to Chicago. It's got the major city of Chicago within a 30 minute drive. Different industries and different businesses have actually seen Gary, Indiana as an opportunity zone. Amazon put a distribution center in there. Hard Rock Casino built something in Gary. Uh, a major 5G phone developer, I can't think of the name right now, put a, a, a manufacturing plant right there. There's people other than investors who are looking at this and saying, hey, we can get labor. We can buy property cheap. There's very beneficial tax advantages to not being in Chicago, Illinois, and instead going 30 minutes across the border to Gary, Indiana. We can do a heck of a lot better. So I personally believe, personally, I believe that Gary, and this is a little bit of a gamble, but I think it's an educated, good risk. Personally, I believe that Gary has hit rock bottom and it has nowhere else to go but up. It's too close to major population centers for it to ever completely disappear off the map like an old mining, gold mining town or something in, in the middle of the mountains. Um, it will make a recovery because people will see that, hey, in the age of being able to live and work where you want and work remotely from home, why not move 30 minutes away and buy this big, beautiful house? Instead of live in Chicago and, and, and spend a fortune to live in a little cardboard shanty. You know, I don't want to do that. And that's why I live 45 minutes away from Seattle. Because heck no, I'm not going to spend the money to, so I can save on the commute. I'll, I'll live out here and drive in. So I, I really, truly believe that Gary, Indiana has hit rock bottom. And the proof for it is, look at the value of houses. You know, when my mentor started, he'll talk all the time about how he bought fully renovated, brand new remodeled homes, turnkey properties for $40,000. $50,000, sometimes even only like $30,000. Very cheap, inexpensive houses that in any other market would be 10 times the value of what he paid. Those houses are almost completely gone. You can't find them at that price range anymore. You could still find them between sixty dollars to $100,000. Now, my mentor started buying his first houses only back in uh, 2018, 2019. I bought my first ones in Gary in 2020. It's now 2022. And I, at the end of 2021, I closed on two more properties. Now you've seen the prices that I'm getting again, 34,000, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, and 90,000, but prices are going up. It's not going to be possible to get those super, super cheap ones anymore. That being said, relative to the cost of housing or rental properties in the rest of the country, it's still very inexpensive, but a word of caution. Just because you've got big California, Washington, New York money bags, and this is the cheapest thing you've ever even seen in your life, and you're like, heck man, you line me up for like six of these properties, you still need to do your due diligence and not get taken advantage of. Make sure you're studying the market because some of these folks aren't dumb, right? They know that a big wig investor like you, like me, I hate to call myself that because I'm not, but some big California, Washington guy is going to swoop in and be willing to overpay, and that's where you need to be careful not to overpay. So get local boots on the ground so that you don't make that mistake. But ultimately, again, Gary is going to be on the comeback. I believe it. My mentor believes it. Businesses, businesses like Amazon, the freaking 5G telephone production company, and the Hard Rock Casino have actually invested in that community. And they have teams of lawyers and economists economists to make decisions about what they think is going to benefit their company. So if they see the value, if they see the value add in a city like Gary, which again is the most miserable city in America, if they're willing to invest in it, so am I. And again, because I invest for cash flow, the only way I get hurt, the only way I get hurt is if the rental values go down. My mortgage is fixed, principal interest and is fixed on the property. So, so long as my rents hold steady, I'm going to be just fine. If the value of the house goes down, but people are still renting it, I'll be all right. And the only thing that I can share with you over the last two years that I've owned rental properties in Gary is rents have gone through the roof, just like they have everywhere else. So my cash flow has just gone bonkers. 
Anyways, if you're interested in learning more about Gary, discussing with me why I think it's a positive place to invest, please follow me on Instagram, send me a message down in the comments, I respond to everybody, I will respond to your DMs, I want to hear from you about where you're investing, is it similar to Gary, maybe it's Birmingham, Alabama, or Tulsa, Oklahoma, both similar cities in history and issues, if you're investing, let me know where, and let me know why. Guys, I appreciate you for watching the video. Hopefully you gained something beneficial from it. And now I'm gonna share with you what I'm trying to do here for you, for a special offer for everybody who subscribed to me before I hit 5,000 subscribers. This is a military challenge coin, except it's not from the military. They're very common, it started in the military. They're very common in military and law enforcement, the challenge coin. I'll show you that one right there. I don't know if you can see it. What a challenge coin is, is it's given to members of a unit. In this case, this is my SWAT coin right here for being on our SWAT team. And it's required that I carry this on me at all times. If I was to ever run into another SWAT member and they were like, hey man, you got your coin on you? And I said, oh shoot, I left it at home. That's not a good time. I'm gonna be punished at our next training. But military challenge coins, they're just supposed to symbolize the brotherhood. They're supposed to symbolize common beliefs, core values, shared values between a group of individuals. I have right here, one for my district for the difficult time we went through in 2020 responding to all of the crazy riots that were happening. I have uh, one that was sent to me by a follower who's actually a, a Texas uh, customs agent. He sent me one and he's a, he's a good guy. He used to live in Washington. I have many different coins, but of course the one that's the most important to me uh, is my SWAT coin and I worked very hard for it. But my, my idea for you, what I want to do for you, my viewers, for everyone who followed me before I hit 5,000 subscribers, the OGs of my followers, the originals, the people who were with me from day one, I want you to screenshot that you're subscribed, like just a picture of my YouTube page and you've subscribed to just screenshot it and then DM that picture to me on Instagram. Send me the picture on Instagram so that I can verify, hey, and most of you guys I recognize because you've commented on my videos. Send me the picture of you subscribed to me, follow me on Instagram and send it to me. And then if I hit 50,000 subscribers, which I will, I'm never gonna give up. When I hit 50,000 subscribers, I'm gonna get minted for the original gangsters of my channel up to, up, up to potentially 5,000 coins, which would cost me a pretty penny, no pun intended, <laughs> but I, I have a feeling it'll probably only be like a few hundred, but if it is 5,000, that's a good problem to have. I will get minted and I will design a challenge coin for the original followers of my channel, and if you send me that message that shows you subscribe before 5,000, I will make sure that you get mailed to you a challenge coin once I hit 50,000 subscribers. So guys, if that's something you're interested in, please, please hit me up on Instagram, send me a DM. It might be a year or three years before I get there, but I will get there because I don't give up. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully it was beneficial to you. Leave a comment down below and hey, we'll catch you next time. <laughs>